you are welcome to another edition of Beyond the Parameters. As you can see, you are shooting from Norwich Lab at East Legon opposite the Malcolm Shopping Mall. So you can contact Norwich Lab on 0242101461. As you can see, I'm well located in my national regalia, just branded and ready for the competition. And I could get some red, gold, green colors as I represent to also cover me as I look forward to take a picture of myself and get some graphics online. It's Go Ghana, Go Black Stars. The African Cup of Nations 2019 has started and I would also want you to give me the predictions as to who would win the African Cup of Nations with the games played so far. So on this edition, it's Go Ghana, Black Stars, Go whichever team you support. And also, if you were Coach Chris Yapia, which players would you parade as your first 11 going to the first game against Benny? We put all that beyond the parameters. On top of my game, keeping the one honey into the one wami. And then my boys and pen wadi as I day on top of my game. Keep one hand, don't tell me there's only Abba, Abba, Abba. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell me there's only Abba, Abba, Abba. And you are welcome to Beyond the Pyramid. And I got my guy here, Samuel Zega, to dissect. The issues. How have you been? Ah, I've been good. Yeah, there are some rounds in the making through social media as to the graphics um, that a lot of people has, have spoken about it on end. They've also loved at, at it. Um, what's your view on, on the graphics which have portrayed the Ghana Black Stars? Well, I must be brutally honest. I think that it's a big shame to Ghana mm. uh, to put out such pictures, gory pictures out there. I'll describe them as gory pictures out there. <laughs> It doesn't represent the country enough. It doesn't represent these players. Come on, these are big players, players who play in the top, like, top flights in Europe. And uh, to, to take such pictures and then uh, be, be posting on social media like that, it made them look a bit primitive. But on the whole, thank God they had to just take it off. And it. I guess exactly. They had to, that was the right thing they did. They had to delete it. Because, come on, players like Thomas Partey at Atlet Atletico Madrid, I'm sure he knows what a photo shoot really means. A player like Fuja Samuat, Inter Milan, Andrea Yu, Fenerbahce. But to be honest, Fuja Samuat looked like he didn't want to be there. Like, they had forced yeah, him to take a picture. And, and, and from, what, from all indications, you could tell that the players had no idea of, of this particular design. It's like just, oh, I need to take a picture of you and all mm. that for a photo shoot. But they didn't know what the graphic designer no. or whoever was in charge of that design but, had in mind. But there's, Crazy no, idea. there's no excuse for Christian Chu and Numa who turned well, them. Well, they actually like turned them. Well, it happened. I mean, how, how? But, but it could be a human error. But it's, mm. it's, it's all depending on the photographer, whoever was taking oh. the picture, to tell him, look, my, my friend, my brother, you've turned up the flag upside down. You're not showing us a picture of Guinea, you know, Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> but on the whole, I think that's just total, total mess from the communications team. I don't know who else I should blame for this. The communications team, I think that they didn't do well with this particular. It was needless, honestly. Okay, so to the business of the day, um, we have to go straight up. It's Ghana going up against Benin, and we would like to give our, our starting lineup as to who we would feel should start um, that game. If there's no player mentioned, remember that player is sitting on the bench from our point of view. And don't come and ask us, why didn't you put A and B there? You are advised to just drop your, your, your starting level in the comment section and we'll take it up from there. So, my formation would be a 4-2-3-1 formation. Which formation would you go for? Uh, 4 2 three. I would like to go with um, a 4-back, mm -hmm. two-man midfield, okay. one player in front of the midfield, and that's 4-2-1. Three up front. Okay. So four, two, one, three, flat. Okay. That's, that is an interesting formation. So, uh, with me, uh, the first person, the, that's the keeper, I'll go with Richard Ofori starting. Uh, he has been the one leading the charges for long, and I feel that he does have enough experience. Him, he was the, the keeper who, who was in post in the Ghana's third place playoff against Burkina Faso in 2017, and from there, he's been the one in post for Ghana throughout the qualifiers, so I believe he should, he should start. Yeah, among these three goalkeepers, 
I would also pick Richard Ofori. I think that he has gathered the experience over time, especially, like you rightly said, after the last edition of the AFCON. He manned up, got into that space, and has been our number one since. And I don't see any reason dropping Richard Ofori for a big tournament of this nature. And considering the three goalkeepers in the fray, Ofori gets a nod for me. Okay. And we started agreeing with ourselves, but I bet you, as the discussion goes on, <laughs> it's bound to get a bit murky. So with right back, I'll go with Adi Adoma. I feel he's the one who's trusted in that position. Unfortunately, um, Kwesi Apia just went with Adi Adom as the natural right back. Um, he did not pick any other player who I know is, is, is naturally fitted for right back. Atama Olawe can deputize in that position. Um, was, of course, the last time he started for Ghana, it was a disaster. Right, 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 right. Back, Very so horrible. I believe Andy Adon should go for me. Who else can fit into that spot rather than Andy Adon? I think that he's had a couple of good games at Red End this season. Um, I don't see anyone usurping him at that spot. Atama Lawe, fine, fantastic player. He normally plays very well when you use him at the right side of a three back. But when it's a flat 4 4 2, I think he puts him in a very uh, uncomfortable corner. So, and you don't get set for me, uh, number two. I agree with you on that okay. one as well. <laughs> okay. I think, okay, so then I'll move straight to left back. Let's, let's, try, and, let's try and see what, what goes on there. Left back for me is no more than you know. I, I, I just feel um, since he's, he's the trusted person in that position, I feel that for the Ghana Black Stars, I'll have to go with Luma Abu, you know, he's, he's, been, he's been the guy who he's been Chris Yapier's guy since he took over the charges in the second coming of the month. So I feel at left back, it's Luma Abu, you know. At left back, I'd like to go with um, Abdul Baba Rahman. I mm. think that when it comes to tournaments of this nature, he's been dead than that, seen as all. And, uh, I think it's one he's been one tournament. One yeah. tournament, but he went to the World Cup with under 20. Okay. So in 2013, Turkey 2013. And he came to Chelsea, he's been all around Europe, and it takes just one tournament to spark another or revive your career as a player. He's not performed poorly at all, especially after he bounced back from that ACL injury he had at the pre uh, previous edition. So I think that Baba Rahman gets the note from him. He is a very good player. He knows um, how to move the ball all around in terms of attacking sense, defending as well. And that telepathy seems to be there when it comes to the Ghana team. Fine, Lumo Agbenyenu has had a very decent run under Coach James Kusiapia, the second administration. I don't take anything away from him as well, but it's very good that there's competition at that spot. But yeah. on any day, yeah. I'll go with Abdul Baba Rahman. So. Well, it's, it's, it's just Lumo. It's just Lumo for me. But so, so from right back, we are moving to the centre backs. I would go with Kasim Hu as my first centre back. Yeah, great player from from Hoffenheim. He's been very, very decent um, so far ever since he's stepped into the Ghana Blasters charges as well as playing in, in, in Hoffenheim. So I believe he's a sure bet. Now, the person to pair Kasim Nu with has always been has always been in contention. I'm I'm very sure you will not agree with me, but oh, I'll no. go with Jonathan Mensah next to next ah. to Kasim Nu. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I'll go with Jonathan Mensah because I feel with the experience he has it. And if we are we are going out for experience. He, with the centre backs we have, the experienced centre backs we have, we have Joseph Edu, interesting talent. We do have um, John Boy and Jonathan Mensah. So, Jonathan Mensah and John Boy, I'll definitely pick Jonathan Mensah. So, right now, I'm putting myself in Kosia Pia's shoes. Okay. If you ask me to pick my first 11, first uh, centre back pair on the day against Benny, I'll go with Joseph Edu mm. and Katim. Why do I say Joseph Edu? This is a player who's got a physique, he's got a legs. And Mind you, at centre back, you need a player who's got that ability mm -hmm. to run at defenders, or to, sorry, to run at attackers, especially when they would want to outpace you. Just everybody is one player who has proven time and time and again that he can do that. But, got but, but with Baba Oman, you did say that you would go for tournament players, but this okay. time round, you are, you are going for at, a player who hasn't. At left wing back or at left back, it's a different ball game altogether. When it comes to the middle of the pack. Are you sure? Where the most important thing happens, you need to play it safe there. Well, you made mention of Jonathan Mensah. He's good, mm. but he's not got the legs. Mm. He looks a bit sluggish at times, although there's the experience. Kasim Nu is another decent ball-playing defender mm. 
which I think would be very good if he complements um, Joseph Edu. Mm. So you have experience and what fresh. Mm. But, but even Kasim you know, he's not as experienced because this this would be his first his first first tournament. But yes. but at that position as a centre back, we saw him at Real Mallorca. We saw him at Young Boys. So so you're saying so you're saying with centre back experience doesn't matter. It matters, but you need somebody who has the strength, somebody who's got the legs. At that point, I could go back and talk about the English Premier League. I don't want to bring it here, but I'll, I'll talk about the English Premier League. Mm. Arsenal, mm. where there was Rob Holding mm. partnering a certain um, Socrates mm. at the start of the season. They went on a very decent run. Rob Holding has not got the experience, but he's got the legs, a ball playing centre back, very fresh has the ability and things were going on for Arsenal and so he got that injury. So since we are even getting into the realms of the English Premier League, <laughs> I, I'll just want you to comment and, and also give your views as to who should pair Kasim Nuhu because we both agree with Kasim Nuhu but who should pair Kasim Nuhu I'm going with Joseph as centre-back and I'm going with Jonathan Mesa. So moving on to midfield. Now this place is very very interesting and by the end of our team sheet <laughs> you wouldn't know why. So with me, I would go for a midfield pair of Kojua Samoa and Thomas Partey in the midfield, who sits in the midfield. Now, who plays in front of them? I'll go for Andrea Yu. Amazing. I'll go for Andrea Yu. Yes, I, it seems with my, with my team sheet, I'm looking much more of the experience. And also, the fact that if indeed you don't start your captain, in the African Cup of Nations, then you have no business changing your captain. Because, yeah. because I felt that the captain was changed because Andrea Yu would be given more starts in, in the tournament. Sure. So if he won't start in, 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 in the first 11 for me, then I don't see why he's supposed to be the captain of the side. Because, because if your captain would sit on the bench anyway, then as someone Janice as well, yeah, yeah, he gets best as the captain. It's, it's so, interesting so, so, so for me, my midfield three is Kojua Samoa, Thomas Tepate, Andrea Yu behind the striker. Well, for me, I'll go with two men in midfield, two men in front of the defense, and one man in front of the two men. So, okay. with that two, I'll go with Mubarak Wakasu, who is very good, very, it's a tough knot. Wakasu and Kojua Samoa in that role. It's going to be very controversial and interesting because they are, they are two yeah. left-footed players, but mm. hey, we can just give it a try on that. And he played Thomas Tepati right in front of them, mm. where he can thrive. Well, we need a bit of creativity. We need him to do all those stuff. So, party in front of a mobile Kwakasu and Kojua Samoa partnership. That's my midfield for me. On any day, it should be bossing uh, uh, every department of the game. But should be bossing me, that, uh, every, every, every uh, African side they meet. My only problem is with Mubarak Wakasu. I feel his efforts are a bit overrated for the Ghana Black Stars. The thing is, everyone talks about Mubarak Wakasu's ability to pass, to give a long pass, yeah, long to give a long pass. But I don't feel they are as accurate as we think they are, mostly. Because 2015, he was, he was impeccable. He was great in the four-man midfield Abam Grant setup. It was a 4-4-2 strict formation. Flat. Abam Grant, he played a similar formation with still with Thomas Partey and Mubarak Wakasu. Yeah. But in 2017, I... Mubarak Wakasu wasn't the man for me. So you know, you know about Wakasu, he is a very good tackler. We need him as a defensive mid for that day. Although it would get murky at times because he, he could go dirty in certain games where Tempest fly up. But I think that he's our safest defensive mid for that, apart from if we have who I, I think wouldn't be starting in the tournament. So Wakasu, yes, deep in midfield, he could be there, win the balls. And could surprise defenses. And even like with, what Gary Saka uh, uh, does for Arsenal. Even with his ball winning abilities, it also it can also turn into foul winning abilities. Of course, we so get in foul. It's about risk. It's about risk. It's about we taking risk as as a, as a country. Play him there. Mm. Make sure you have the ball most often. Mm. That's what could prevent Mubarak Bakasi from going into such rough and silly tackle. But I think that partnering him with Kujia Samoa wouldn't be a problem. Mm. Kujia Samoa could also keep the ball. For a while, and just 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 that you can just link him up with Thomas Tepati with that trade end. It could be a very fantastic midfield. Forwards. So with the forwards, I would move on to to the wingers. I'll start with my wingers. I'll move, I would go with Christian Achu um, on the right, Thomas Japon on the left, and my number nine, the striker, is Caleb Kuban. I I I I I'm looking at the abilities of of the players I've seen. 
Um, to be honest, uh, Kwab knows who I've seen him a few times, but I just feel when it comes to abilities with, with how um, Kaleb Kuban can link well with the, with the midfield and also score out, out going for him. Because I feel the Black Stars midfield is, is one that would hold the ball a lot, and I don't see too much creativity coming from, from the midfield. Of, although we do have a great players in Thomas Pate and Koya Sama, who would be the who would be the guys who are supposed to create chances. But I do feel the way this Black Stars is set up, it needs one striker who can who can be able to get the runs right and get the chances right. Thomas de Japon, very interesting interesting winger, has the ability to run at defenders and push through. My only hope is that he'll be fit for the tournament. And Christian Achu is, is, is the well-trusted winger, a place for Newcastle, and I feel that experience will also help. So that is my front three. Well, you know what's interesting about this entire team that I'm going to put out? The goal scoring, would have, would, goal scoring responsibility would have to be shifted onto our wingers. As a more than a very good goal scorer, but wouldn't be starting. He wouldn't be starting for sure. That's Jordan Ayu. Would Kwesiapi have the gas to bench him? That's another question for another day. Kwabna Usu. Would Kwesiapi start him? Another big question. Caleb Ekuban has scored two goals in two starts for Ghana, uh, two appearances for Ghana, but he came off the bench to score such goals. We don't know how he will perform when he starts. And I don't think Kwesi will gamble with that. So up front, with my three up front, Sefa, I have Achu on the right. Andre, are you on the left? Because he's our captain, he's going to start. So Andre on the left, and we need one man up front. And that will be Jordan Ayu. Mm. So, your, so your, your, Andre, your, are you striker, left? your striker will be Jordan, 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 Jordan to start. And Andre, are you on Even the though I'm not so convinced about how he's performing in the Black Star Jets. Because but my problem with Andrea on the wings is tactical discipline. He always, he's always finding himself drifting inside. Yes, so drifting inside, his, yeah. his, role, he, his role would have to be cut out clearly to him. Mm -hmm. Look, you're on the wings. Help whoever is on the left side of, of or Defense. right behind you. Help him. Defensive uh, duties, help him. In the attacking sense, try and then push more. And we know Andrea, well, even though he's lost, he's, he's, he's lost it, I think that there's still more in him, yeah. which he needs to prove himself if he really wants Ghana to be happy about him. Because already there's a lot of controversy about his performance with the club and with the country in recent times and all that. But it takes just one tournament or one game to spark up or revamp that vibe. And sure, I give him that bet on the left side of our attack. So Andre, are you on the left? Jordan through the middle, Christian Achu on the right. Andrea, you should get us goals. Peter Nacho should get us goals. And Jordan, are you? He should get us goals. <laughs> so I'll leave all the, the are you the critics at the mercy of, of someone's guy. You can tell him anything you want. But that's how we wrap up um, our second episode of Beyond the Pyramids. We are shooting from Norwich Lab, the East Legon branch, right to opposite the Melcom Shopping Mall. You can contact Norwich Lab on 0242-101-461. One. By the way, uh, we are sponsored by Patawa Jerseys and the details of uh, Patawa Jerseys will be on your screen. You can contact them for these impeccable jerseys. You can get any um, team of your choice with the Afghan Cup of Nations as well as your club side when the season resumes. You are also reminded to like, comment as well as subscribe to our page. So this is Wingside Studios. This is the second episode of Beyond the Pyramids. Afcon 2019 has begun. We are the road. But I'm sitting on 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 the road. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sitting on the road. Into the warm I'm the one boy the one who's the as I day on top of my game Keep one hand, don't tell me There's only Abba, Abba, Abba Yeah, yeah Don't tell me There's only Abba, Abba, Abba Yeah, yeah Keep your night, there's only Abba